So, another rushed intro on a Sunday. Old mate spitting water all over himself. Short intro. Um, loading up a double set, going down to Melbourne. I'm going to go to the coast road instead of the Newell this week, and I'm going to hit Trapper's Bakery on the way down there. Either I'm going to make it to Goulburn tonight slash tomorrow morning, or I'm going to have a seven wherever I want and then hit Trapper's Bakery on the way through there. No, me, and I'm a lazy bastard. I'll probably stop in Beresfield and then just go to Trapper's Bakery on my way through Goulburn, but we'll see how we go. Let's go on an adventure. Nah, it's corny. <laughs> Say it louder. Roll the intro. <laughs> Want to say bye? Daddy. You can have a look. Say bye. No, Wave. Say Waving. Good okay, Dad's gonna go, son. <laughs> so that was one of the more <laughs> that was one of the more emotional departures from Huey. Uh, either he's mad that he didn't get to come and jump in Dad's truck, or or he's sad that I'm or he's starting to get sad that I'm leaving. And leaving him behind. Um, one of the two, I don't know. Pretty emotional though. I'm gonna get this gear sorted out. So, I know you guys enjoyed that parking bay special, but um, I haven't really got anything special this week. But what I do have is um, marinated chicken, that's for snacks and for, break for quick breakfast and stuff like that. Chicken korma, chicken satay. Hopefully, that's the last of these I'll bloody see. This is what I've got for a little steak and egg jibby job. Heart stoppers, obviously. I know a lot of you guys don't like me when I drink, smoke cigarettes, drink energy drinks, but you know, too bad. Yeah, I think that's it. I'm gonna go here and fuel up. My double set split up, so I gotta put the A trailer with the B trailer. Um, I haven't got time to do pre trips with you guys, so um, yeah, the next shot will be bloody, the next shot will be out on the road. Let's hit the road.
uh, just arrived in Heathwood where I'm loading out of and got my B trailer on. Right now I'm gonna chuck my PPE on and split these trailers up. I wish I could show you guys these like I did in the first couple of vlogs, but oh well. So real quick before I skip ahead to when my trailers are hooked up and I'm out the gate and loaded, a couple of people in the comments from the last two videos have asked me to explain the auto shifter. Um, and I have done it before, but I, I will, I'm happy to explain it again. If I can get the lot to... So this is just a normal auto gearbox. It works exactly It works exactly the same as a car, but it's just got more gears. That's your normal drive. If I drove it in drive, um, the truck would just drive itself. I don't operate it in drive at all because um, these gearboxes aren't that smart, especially once you've got more weight on. They don't know which gear to be in um, taking off. And when you're trying to slow down, they'll go down one too many and then all of a sudden the truck's um, revving right out. Um, so I drive it in manual. So there's manual there. And manual just lets me operate the gears um, up and down as I see fit. Um, with that, that's up and, that's, and that there's down. So that there, someone said when I change down it sounds like a manual. Yeah, it kind of does, but it kind of does it at the same time. Yeah, that, that just gives me more control over the revs of the truck, that's all. That's that's the only reason I drive it in manual. Um, if it was faster in auto, then I would drive it in auto, but it's faster in manual gears, so that's why I use the clicker. People have told me to, when I'm on the jake brakes, to put it down into low gear. <laughs> <laughs> and the truck will slow itself down faster um, we because of this here we have um, we lose points on our MT data system if we over rev the truck and over revving the truck is like 18 on the is like 18 on the taco um, so I know that you can rev Cummins right out to 2 gram but we well I don't do it anyway um, just because um, yeah it's considered an over rev to go over 18 so I can't put it in low to slow it down so manual it is. While I'm here though, I'll show you guys. This is one of the Kenworth Smart Wheels. It's upside down at the moment because of the, because the truck's parked, but um, that there as well, I'll show you guys all this. That there is high beams. That'll flash the high beams when someone's overtaking me. Um, that's cruise control, so that's on, set, and off. And that's resume. I don't know what resume does, to be honest with you. And this is just the Jake brakes on the steering wheel here, so. That there is a full six, um, using all six cylinders to slow the truck down, and that there is using half the cylinders, so using three cylinders, um, and it changes changes the sound. So I play with it every now and again, but not too often. Not much else. Oh, oh let's let's keep going through um, all the stuff that's in the truck since I'm sitting there doing nothing. That here, everyone asks about that because it picks up that the lights are flashing on camera. So that's a Guardian system. That's an eye monitor. That's like a um, fatigue monitoring. Monitoring. That's a fatigue monitoring system. Um, all that does is it calibrates to our face um, when the truck starts up, and once we get going, that camera symbol will turn off, and two infrared lights will show up there, and that's what you guys see as flashing lights on camera. That's an eyesight monitor. Uh, that's an eyesight camera. So if I if I close my eyes for a certain amount of time. That there will set off, set off an alarm that puts the fear of God in you. It really does. It's the weirdest sound ever. And we've got big vibrators underneath our seats that shake the seat. Um, but we call them a seat shaker. That's just a part of fatigue monitoring. Up there we've got a, we've got a dash cam facing forward behind those fans there. And over there in the corner as well is another camera watching the cab. Um, this one here. That, that camera there, that's for... The other beeping noise that you guys always hear so that's lane departure and that's proximity to the vehicle in front of you that's what this this dial is here so if i go too far over one side the picture changes and it like it tells me i'm going over the right lane i'm going over the left lane and when a car shows up i think it's like 100 meters in front of me a car will show up on this dial and then as the car gets closer to me when i'm bagging it up it'll count down how many seconds i am towards i am away from the vehicle in front of me that's it uh, there's not much else we do have an empty data system, but a lot of people have empty data systems, so you guys know what those are. Maybe you don't know what they are, but that's all about it. That's all the tr gadgets in this truck. Other than that, it's just the standard K200. So I'll get back to you guys once I'm loaded and not out the gate. By the way, before I forget, the truck of the week, I'll insert it here. I am still going to post other people's trucks on the Facebook page, just to 
just so other people can see their trucks on a bloody social media platform because um, it's always good seeing photos of your truck posted by other people so um, I've had photos of uh, Brock Emmett take uh, I've, I've had photos of my truck going through Beresfield by Brock Emmett and I, I loved seeing them so I'll post you guys truck photos throughout the week yeah the truck that I chose that flat roof K200 <laughs> you gotta love it you gotta love a flat roof K2 um, I do anyway I'm biased of course because I drive a, because I drive a K200 but I love a flat roof so yeah good on you for sending that in Andrew I appreciate it brother um, hope you don't mind me putting your truck in the vlog but it's a beautiful truck brother and it looks like you take care of it too so side note um, <laughs> I don't have anything to send to you guys when I choose trucks of the week because we're, <laughs> we're still a relatively small channel I hope like eventually we end up in a place that I can send you guys hats and stubby coolers and things like that all right, I'm loaded, hooked up. I pulled out from where I was. Pre-trips, let's get into it. Airbag switch. So the airbag switch that has to be pulled out and facing um, straight up and down. That's just so I'm not traveling down the road with bloody airbags up in the air or sagging onto the tires. My weights, that's reading just under 15 ton. Just under 15 ton over the, um, over the middle set of tri-axles. Another airbag switch, same story with that one. Make sure it's facing straight up and down. And that's the back. And that's 15 and a half. Vehicle. And long to tell everyone that I'm a long vehicle. All my lights and indicators are working. My lines are good. I'm just checking the Facebook post. You guys are you guys are going crazy on Facebook. Um, it's good to see. I appreciate everyone's input. Um, and everyone telling me to have a safe week and stuff like that. I really do appreciate it. But anyway, I know that the start of this video is rushed. There's good reason for that. Um, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put the trappers uh, video in this video, and then I'm gonna try and put a truck washing at the end. I'm, I can almost guarantee to be a truck washing at the end, unless I have to go again after a seven-hour break once I'm in Melbourne. So all up. Um, so all up I've got, what's that, I've got 14 ton on the drive axle, then just to say 15 on the tries, so that's 29, then another 15 and a half over the back set of tries, so that's 39, uh, 44, I'm only, I'm only around 50 ton with this double set, um, so that means that it's going to be a fun trip down to, that means it's going to be a fun trip down to Melbourne. So we've got 33 Shep pallets and 31 um, Loskin pallets, so that's 64 pallets over 34 spaces. So I'm, I'm full right from back to front, double stack, but they're obviously light pallets. Put a screenshot of where I'm at, but I've just uh, finished a half an hour break in Johns River here, um, basically between Port Macquarie and Tari, and I'm about to get back up it. 
and I'm not sure where I'll I'm not sure where I'll pull up for my seven. I usually stop Beresfield because I'm lazy like that, and I can still stop there and then go through Trappers and get that um, and then film there. So it doesn't really matter to be honest with you. Talk to you guys soon. So I found my final resting spot for the night. Um, I'm I'm here at the I'm at the southbound Wyong uh, Ampole with the twins here. Um, 
it's quarter to going on four o'clock now uh, it's going on four o'clock now the sun's still down it'll be down for a few more hours yet and the temperature isn't going to be too bad while I'm asleep um, so I'll have to, so my 10 hour my seven hour break will be up at 11 a.m. Uh, it's only getting up to 22 and that's pretty good that's a pretty good temp I think it'll be a bit humid um, with that kind of temperature but that's all right pretty good drive I could have went further honestly I'm not even tired but I do prefer to pull up before the sun comes up and if I would carried on into Sydney um, it would have been 5.30 going on 5.30 6 o'clock and traffic would have been in full swing So I ended up here at the Wyong and Am uh, sorry at the Ampole and Wyong um, backed it into the corner here I was nervous about being blocked in but it's almost midday so everyone else is already on the road but my seven hour break's finished I don't plan on wasting any more time here I've walked around done all my pre-trips and um, I'm gonna get on the road I just went inside to have a shower and there was no hot water so I washed all the important parts and then got out of there. I don't think Ampol cares much for truck drivers, but that's all right. They can do whatever they want. I am hungry, um, and I was gonna cook like some steak and eggs here, but I think I'm just gonna, because I slept, I slept for the whole seven hours, basically. I'm just gonna make a quick chicken, um, chicken wrap, and then get on the road and go down to Trappers. He's been asleep for a while, that bloke.
the Sydney Depot to get some fuel. Been here for about five minutes, straight back on the road. Let's get going again. I'm here in Goulburn at the big merino. 
and I'm gonna go pay Trapper's Bakery a visit. So if these pies aren't any good, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna release a video on it, because um, I don't want to steer people towards a business that's selling crap food. But um, I'm also not gonna tell anybody that I think it's bad. So if you don't, so if you don't hear anything after this clip about these pies, then things didn't go well. So good news. <laughs> I just finished smashing two pies. I should, uh, why don't I get some footage of them for the bloody vlog? Yeah, I'm gonna put that video up. But yeah, I'm happy enough with those pies. I got a steak, bacon and cheese and a meat pie. And the meat pie was good, just plain meat. But the steak, bacon and cheese was a bit eh, but whatever. They're good enough to tell you guys to get some. I'm gonna leave the big merino behind and get on the road, I think.
So, it's Tuesday night, and I'm in Sydney, um, in the Sydney Depot, and I'm going to end the vlog here, because um, after going through the footage after the, after what's just played, it's, it's trash, honestly. Like, I'll just be honest with you, it's, it's horrible. It's like, it was dark, uh, it was rainy at some points, but long story short, I got down to Melbourne, I quick hitched and went up back up to Wodonga. I woke up in Wodonga this morning, washed my truck. I didn't film that because uh, I'm not allowed to film in the depots. And then now I'm back in Sydney. And I've got about a 12, 13 hour layover here. Um, my trailer that I'm taking to Brisbane in the morning is coming up to Sydney tonight from Melbourne in a, in a changeover. So, um, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna wake up at like seven in the morning, um, call the office and ask them where that trailer is and then once it gets here, I'll literally get them to drop it in the driveway, fuel it up and I'll shoot off up the road. Um, so yeah, that's this vlog done I guess. As always, thanks for joining me. Thank you to all our community for your support and all the new subscribers and watchers and blah, blah, blah. And thank you guys for watching. Makes it all worth it. I'll see you in the next one.